Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you on how you can set up callbacks in Airflow uh, to send notifications out to Microsoft Teams. Um, so callbacks, if you're not already familiar, are basically the key kind of component within Airflow for setting notifications, for setting any kind of failure or downstream action to occur based on a success within a DAG. So there's actually five callback types. There's on success callback, on failure callback, SLA miss callback if a task missed to find SLA, on retry callback if a task is up for retry but hasn't explicitly failed yet, and then on execute callback, which will be called right before task begins executing. So what I'm gonna show you today is number one, how to define that callback function, the function that will actually call out to Microsoft Teams uh, when any of these states occur. Um, and then I'll also show you how to implement them within your own DAG. Uh, so without further ado, let's head into VS Code in my local Airflow environment. I'll show you how to get started. So now within this environment, uh, what you're going to want to do is within your requirements.txt file, both install the HTTP provider so we can send API requests. And then you are also going to want to install the, uh, yeah, just the HTTP providers. Um, the Microsoft Teams doesn't actually have its own dedicated provider uh, to Airflow. So we have to use the generic API request provider, which is HTTP here, uh, to actually issue uh, our requests and receive them. Um, so we're just gonna use that for the duration. Um, and you actually, yeah, you don't have an HTTP provider that you can download if you wanted to. Um, so now that we've installed the provider, what we're gonna wanna do is go to our include directory. And then we're going to want to create a new file, which we're going to call the MS Teams callback function. Um, and so this is the function where we're going to define how we're going to interact and send that message into Microsoft Teams once a failure state or really any of those callback states has been achieved. Those states determine how it's triggered. The callback function just determines the method through after it's been triggered, what actions does it take? Does it send out a message to Slack? Does it send it out an email? Uh, or in this case, sending out a message through Microsoft Teams. And actually, before we're even able to send out a uh, set up our callback function, we're going to need to define a hook to interact with the Microsoft Teams. Because there isn't an out of the box Airflow provider uh, for work interact with Microsoft Teams, we'll actually need to develop our own. So what you're going to want to do, and I accidentally created this and then recorded the start of it without talking, but you're going to create a, a file called MS Teams hook or whatever else you want to call it. Uh, and within this file, you're going to want to import the HTTP hook and the Airflow exception uh, files and then define class MS Teams webhook hook as an extension off of the HTTP hook. So creating a new connector uh, based off the existing HTTP connector. And you can see we're in this case now adding the ability to uh, add a Microsoft Teams webhook token, the message we're gonna see on Teams, subtitle, text to the action button, URL of the action button, hex code of the card cut theme that we wanna send, and also the proxy to use when making the webhook request. Um, so all the special things we need to actually uh, send a message using Microsoft Teams, we need to create this custom operator to be able to accept these fields. Um, or in this case, the webhook, the custom operator will come in a second. Then what we're gonna do is just define an initialized method. So here, just taking all those different files or all those different fields that we requested and just initializing them as variables that we can use in subsequent functions. Then getting a uh, proxy, we're just going to just uh, get a message to you know, the, cell, the current environment get that information around what the connection details are for the current proxy that we're on. And then we're gonna use those later on to make the connection. Then get token is either going to receive the token that will manually insert into uh, the file, or it's going to use a connection ID to refer to a particular webhook token, um, and then use that webhook token further down uh, in this connection method. Then what we're doing here is building a message. So this is, we're using the template or the files or yeah, file template that Microsoft team used this year uh, to build a message, making sure it has the, you know, all the different characteristics that a Microsoft team message requires, subtitle, message, theme color, button text, button URL, all that good stuff, all getting thrown in this build message function here. And then once that build message function is done, we have everything set up, we are going to define an execute task. And this is the task that are the function that is actually going to execute the webhook call. So it's going to get our proxy. It's going to print out the proxy URL to make sure it's the correct one. Uh, you see we have the HTTPS URL, making sure we're just connecting through HTTPS as is standard practice. And then what we're doing is our input. 
um, are we're running this and connecting to that endpoint. So you can see here, self is uh, Microsoft Teams web, webhook hook, passing it that token, passing it the proxy, passing it the build message, um, as well as the headers. So it's just making sure that it knows to accept the JSON style. And then an extra option here are just proxies uh, to make sure that it connects through the proxy that we're actually using to connect to Microsoft Teams, um, which is just a local Airflow environment. So now we'll save this. And then once we're done with that, it's time to also make our uh, webhook, or sorry, our Microsoft Teams webhook operator. So to get started with our operator, what we're gonna do is create another new file uh, called MS Teams operator. So op.py. Um, and then this is basically just giving us a framework to call that webhook, that function that we just created. So what we'll do is just import logging, simple HTTP operator, the uh, MS Teams webhook hook that we created, then we're going to create a class with pretty much the same uh, fields, just defining what we need to actually issue this connection. And this lets us use this hook uh, at, in a templatized way as an operator. And then what we're going to do is just define a, the template field, so message and subtitle, uh, which are just the fields that we're actually going to pass into MS Teams. And then here, just calling all the values that we're going to pass into this operator to actually make a connection. And then second, all we're gonna do is just call that hook that we just created. So here, MS Teams webhook hook, and we are just going to execute that to actually run the provided SQL query uh, or just run whatever query we're going to need to, or message we're going to need to add to push into uh, that Microsoft Teams hook. Um, so even though it says call the Spark SQL query, this is really just calling the MS Teams SQL query because we're just building off of that uh, base out of the box uh, query hook. So now that we're done setting up our hook and our operator, now it's time to actually define our different MS Teams callback functions. So here, what we're going to do is import both the hook and operator that we created. So the MS Teams webhook operator and the webhook hook, getting the current context, which will just allow us to pull the context from the task, from any task that fails and understand what happened within it. So that we can use that to send message about the task out to our MS, uh, MS Teams environment, import traceback as well. And then what we're going to do here is define our first function as define and define define sorry def uh, dag triggered callback context. So here we're going to start building a log URL with the current task instances URL. So this is just getting the log URL of our current task instance. That's why we have this get current context. Then we have our Teams message that we're going to create. So we're gonna build this dynamically using information around the task. So here using Jinja templating to context.get current task instance task ID, DAG ID to pass the current task ID and DAG ID into the team's message. And then we're going to call that MS Teams webhook operator that we created with our uh, templatized message. So here we're giving a task ID MS Teams callback just because you need a task ID for an operator to run trigger rule all done. So in this case, just saying, hey, this tag was triggered and all and was uh, completed. Then we have this Teams message. So the Teams message that we're building dynamically, we're just putting it into uh, this message format here. Then we have a button text, view log. So this is creating a button within the Microsoft Teams environment uh, to actually click on and go directly to our log URL that we built up here. Then we're also just going to have FF000 as our theme color, um, and then just call this MS Teams callback uh, as our connection ID. And then we're also going to need to return a, a Teams notification execute con with the current context. So this is just going to use the current context of this task to build this message and then send it out uh, to our Microsoft Teams environment. Then once we're done with that, we're also going to define a DAG success callback. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing for each because you'll notice that these start to take on a similar format. Uh, success callback is just basically changing the message to DAG has succeeded uh, with the same kind of context from getting the execution date and everything. Then we're also going to define one for uh, just an individual task success. So this is for a DAG success callback, but we just want to say for a specific task, say the task has succeeded successfully. You can see all we're doing here again is just changing uh, what the message is within uh, the callback function so that we'll have these called on different callbacks. Um, so then on success, sorry, on failure callback, uh, I'm sorry for saying failure so much. This one actually is a little bit interesting. Uh, what we're going to do with this one 
is include the ability to just sit, join whatever the exception was that caused this task failure um, as this formatted exception. So this will get whatever the failure reason was for a particular task and then formatted exception will join it um, and just strip it and turn it into a string. And then that exception will be formatted and sent out with the rest of the, your Microsoft Teams message as the ones previously were. Now, the next one we're going to use is similar literally designed to the on failure callback, but it's actually a retry callback. So here, we're still going to use that same method of getting the details around what caused the task to fail, but we're also going to say that, hey, this task is retrying. It's the current try number minus one um, out of blank plus one. And the reason for that is because, you know, the classic zero to one, one or zero is one, one is two, and, and with numbers in here. So that's why the editing or the number is being edited here. Um, but that's all that's doing. It's just saying, hey, this is current try out of uh, whatever the max tries is. And then the rest of it is the same as the on um, failure callback. Next, we also have the Python operator. Um, and this is just one for sending a Microsoft Teams message via a Python operator. Um, so here just sending a message via the Python operator and sending it out via Teams. Um, nothing really too special here. Uh, but last one is a little bit special, which is defining the SLA miss callback. So here the DAG ID is going to be SLA, DAG ID, uh, task ID for the SLAs, uh, the execution date, uh, ISO, just ISO format converting it into date time format, and then writing this Teams message of an SLA is missed uh, with the task ID, DAG ID, and execution date. Um, and here we're just sending out a Teams message in the theme color with this particular uh, connection ID. And the reason why it doesn't have the rest of the fields here is because we're not actually passing uh, any kind of link to that uh, particular SLA or that DAG. We're just giving it the DAG and task ID and telling it that there's been an SLA miss um, because there's a you know, defined success or failure state. We just want to know that, hey, we're uh, going to miss our SLA on this particular DAG or task being done. So now that we've got our uh, callbacks all set up, let's try and use them in a simple DAG. Um, so here I'm going to make a new Python file, msteamsdag.py. Um, and then here we're just going to import some basic operators and our callback functions. So here in the import, date time, time delta, bash, dummy, Python operator. And then this is the key one from include import your msteams uh, callback functions. Then what we're going to want to do is define our default args to actually use our MS Teams callback functions. So here under default args, we're going to have our uh, on success callback, on failure callback, on retry, each calling the respective function uh, within that uh, MS Teams callback functions uh, Python file. And you can see here that callback set in the default args will override, will apply to all tasks. But if you override what function you want to call or you want to use a different notification method, then method at the individual task level, you can still have these global default arg, default arg set, but then still override specific tasks for whatever uh, SLA or callback you want them to use. Just to show you what that looks like too, let's just create a simple DAG um, just here on MS Teams callback, say SLA miss callback. If they're miss uh, any SLAs, call that SLA callback. Uh, and something to note here is the SLA will only apply to scheduled DAG runs, not for manually triggered DAG runs. Just a fun little airflow quirk uh, that I don't really know why that happens. Um, but here, just to show you an example of how you can override for a particular uh, task, what you can do is say, hey, uh, on for my dummy operator on execute callback, uh, I want to call my uh, DAG triggered callback, but on success callback, I don't actually want to call anything. So this is overriding um, that particular uh, on success callback to say, hey, I don't actually want one. Um, then you can also just set a dummy operator just to use your default args. And so this will just use whatever the arguments here that were set for this particular task. You can also, if I want to just set a, send a Python message, uh, what I can do is say, hey, for this Python operator, uh, I want to just say, hey, use that MS Teams callback for my Python function, uh, which is the Python callable. So it doesn't even necessarily need to be a success or failure. You can just call that function directly through this MS Teams functions. Um, you can also uh, set finally um, that, hey, maybe you want to change the trigger rule. Maybe you want to say only on success uh, if, you know, 
the all the previous tasks are done, you'll just configure the trigger rule to actually find, hey, is this going to be successful or not based on the uh, success of upstream tasks. Um, and those are just some of the different ways that you can incorporate callbacks into your actual DAG and then utilize these MS Teams callbacks. So now that we've shown you how to set it up, let me show you what a MS Teams callback alert actually looks like. And here you can see a successful alert. Um, so here within this is the test webhook user that we set up. Uh, so you'll need to obviously create that webhook within Microsoft Teams. Uh, you'll see task is succeeded, task, DAG, execution time, task is retrying. Uh, so if we go down here, you'll see that I have, you know, calling my MS Teams callbacks, execution time, airflow exception. So giving the actual uh, information where all it failed. Uh, and then we also have uh, task has failed. So if the task fails, uh, just, you know, saying what command it returned um, and also the execution time and the particular DAG. So here you have it all the information you need uh, to troubleshoot your DAG all serve to you with the notifications through Microsoft Teams. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has helped you set up Microsoft Teams for your own DAGs. Um, and above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.